relationship to everything. Our relationship to energy is headed for a sweeping change, one that will transform how our communities work, the purpose and structure of our economy, and our relationship to a living world that is very much looking for humanity to be a better partner. Let's take a moment to look at our current energy system. Let's focus on electricity. You flip some switches, you plug some things into outlets, you receive an energy bill each month, which gets higher every year. You pay it. You might see some power lines in your neighborhood uh, or a smokestack on the horizon, maybe some neighborhood solar panels. But mostly we tune these things out. Everything else, the trillions of dollars of power plants and power lines that form a machine the size of North America, the arcane world of utility regulation, where decisions that cost Minnesotans billions are made in public but unintelligible meetings, all the burning, mining, drilling, all of that is behind the curtain. This energy system creates a relationship with energy which fuels personal autonomy, but it separates us from those around us, our communities, the land, and the systems on which we depend. Let's take a moment to imagine a different energy relationship, one that restores those lost connections and brings autonomy back to community. When you flip a switch, you can see in real time how your energy use matches the production from solar panels on your roof or a neighboring wind farm. You're part of an energy co-op that owns a network of local clean energy systems. When you have more power than you need, you can sell it to your neighbors. When you have a shortfall, you can buy it from them. Many months, you earn more from energy than you pay. The industries in your community take signals from local wind farms telling them when nearly free clean energy is available, and thus when they should operate. You and your neighbors work together to build a local innovation economy that draws ideas from across the world and energy and materials from your local ecosystem to create a community that thrives. Your local elected officials focus on supporting that community thriving, on uplifting the solutions led by their constituents, because that's where their political power comes from. A world very much like the one I just described is coming, and sooner than we think. If it seems far away, just remember that change always looks that way until it's in the rearview mirror. If we look back at past energy transformations, we see they didn't just change technology, they restructured societies. The energy systems of hunter-gatherers fed societies where economy and ecology are the same thing, where all politics is interpersonal, where culture is that rich network of human and ecological relationships, often over vast spans of time. About 10,000 years ago, people in some parts of the world started to reorganize their energy system around agriculture transforming ecosystems to maximize their production of human usable calories. In doing so, they fostered trade specialization, government to collect, manage, and distribute surplus, cities, class hierarchy, mass slavery. Things changed still further, harnessing ocean winds for trade and colonization, and water mills for early industry, often with disastrous impacts on the health and autonomy of newly colonized and newly industrialized communities. They changed further and faster with coal, oil, gas, nuclear. This has given rise to an economy of mass industrial production, the job as the primary way we make a living, a consumer economy as the primary expression of culture, individualism, the breakdown of communities, special interest politics. We could take more time digging deeper into how energy systems have changed the way societies work, what we believe about them, and how we live our lives. But we're gonna keep moving to where we're headed next. All of these energy transformations concentrated power. They helped us move towards a, a greater range of things that we're able to do, but they also removed us from our ability to produce things. More concentrated mechanical energy and more concentrated political and economic power to manage it. We're now more dependent on a vast and impersonal global economy than we are on our neighbors and our local ecosystems. With that remarkable power comes remarkable costs. Because we rely on this energy for virtually every moment of our lives, we're now stuck paying billions, $19 billion per year in Minnesota alone to giant energy corporations whose basic business model hurts our health, 
pulls wealth out of our communities, especially low-income communities, and threatens the stability of the planet on which we depend. This energy system is supposed to give us ease and comfort, yet it is afflicting millions with asthma and obesity. We have access to virtually every luxury imaginable, yet tens of millions of Americans are faced with the choice between paying their power bill and getting groceries. We have near constant access to climate control, yet we are fueling a climate that is out of control. We have made a devil's bargain. In exchange for access to the power of the gods, we have created an economy that ties us uh, to the erosion of stability of our communities, our politics, our planet. The energy transformation in front of us today offers the opportunity to head in a very different direction, one that brings power back to communities, that gives us autonomy over the immediate choices that sustain our lives. It offers a pathway to an economic relationship with energy where costs are stable or decline over time, and where the wealth generated flows not to far off investors, but to ourselves and our communities working together. It offers an ecological relationship to energy focused on healing, not abuse. It offers a political relationship to energy that fuels democracy, not plutocracy. This energy future that we're imagining is exciting, it's visionary. It's also real. I know because I'm helping build it. In 2009, I helped launch a clean energy cooperative, Cooperative Energy Futures, that helps people in communities create local energy solutions together. In 2013, we got a big boost when the state of Minnesota required XL Energy for the first time to connect community solar gardens to their energy grid and compensate people for the energy generated through their utility bills. For the first time, this opens up access. You no longer have to own property or have upfront capital to invest in order to participate in clean energy. In fact, most community solar garden subscriptions have no upfront costs, and the amount you pay per month is less than what you save on your utility bill. I'll take a moment to let that sink in. Right now, here in Minnesota, you can join a local solar project, pay nothing on the front end, and what you pay month to month is less than what you're currently paying for electricity. Many developers have looked at this and tried to apply the same business models that worked in the fossil fuel energy era, finding a few large corporate subscribers and keeping ownership in the hands of Wall Street. In cooperative energy futures, we've taken a different approach. For example, on our Shiloh project in North Minneapolis, we brought together community members, local elected officials, members of the church, a neighboring mosque, community organizations, so that clean energy is rooted in and led by the communities that it serves. We made sure that subscriptions were available first to residents of the north side with no upfront costs, immediately monthly, monthly savings, and no credit checks, so that clean energy helps wealth stay in low-income communities. We built it on a roof in the middle of the city so that clean energy integrates into the local landscape and doesn't require expensive and inefficient long-distance power lines. We required at least 50% minority labor. Our installer actually achieved close to 90% so that clean energy can help address the racial disparities in employment here in Minnesota. We structured this as a cooperative so that the community members, the subscribers who are participating, cooperatively own the system. They get the long-term profits. They elect and choose our board of directors. This project is just in the, a beginning. It's a template for seven other projects from Minneapolis to Faribault, from Edina to St. Cloud, that we're bringing online over the next nine months. Together, they'll enable 700 Minnesota households to offset their energy use for the next 25 years. This is just the start. Alongside other clean energy co-ops and community organizations nationwide, we're beginning the transition to energy democracy. The technology and economics to scale this up are already here. Wind energy is the cheapest energy source in the Midwest. Solar is catching up quickly. This is what Xcel Energy's CEO has to say about it. If I were talking to you 10 years ago, I didn't think I'd be telling you that solar is competing with fossil. I wouldn't tell you that wind is beating fossil. I'm telling you that now. The costs have come down so quickly that right now, renewable energy is beating out coal, nuclear, even natural gas at a moment when natural gas prices are near an all-time low. And what's more, renewable energy can built, be built at a much smaller scale and much faster 
a few thousand dollars, a couple of million, and you can get it online in six months to two years. This means that local businesses and even individuals can get back into the energy economy. Great, so if this is all technologically feasible, it's quickly becoming the cheapest option, we can just sit back and wait, right? Sorry team, that's the thinking of the old energy system speaking, the one where energy services are delivered by some vague and impersonal somebody else to our doorsteps. Energy democracy is not a spectator sport, and the existing energy players are not gonna make it easy. The energy technologies of the 20th century created economic and political conditions for granting monopolies to energy utilities over electric and gas service. These energy monopolies increasingly understand the emerging clean energy reality, but they're also the same companies that have billions of dollars of investments locked up in the old system. Most of our politicians and our regulators are now looking to these companies the same ones that are counting on making billions of dollars continuing to operate their dirty energy plants as the ones responsible for leading the transition. It may seem obvious, but there's at least three reasons why they're not in a great position to do so. First of all, doing that would erode their ability to make a return on their existing investments. Second, community scale clean energy invites every single one of their customers, all of us, to become their competitors. And finally, utility prices are not set by the market, they're set by a regulator formula. And in this formula, choosing a cheaper option doesn't raise corporate profits. So a lot of the incentive isn't there. It gets even worse. The utilities currently have built their energy system large, central, non-local. It matches the technology of the fossil energy era. They're trying to do renewable energy the same way. Taking that approach reduces the ability of renewable energy, diversified, distributed, to back each other up. Instead, as I'm sure many of these utilities quite appreciate, it requires a new generation of backup power plants fueled by fracked natural gas. If we leave this decision in the hands of the existing power, uh, power companies, they're not gonna head in the direction that we need. The approach, big, central, backed up by frack gas plants, it's technologically ineffective and economically inefficient. It's not gonna get us to the type of decarbonization we need fast enough. To head in a different direction, we have to make a choice. We have big choices ahead of us, choices that will determine the livability of our communities, the shape and fairness of our economy, the fate of our very planet. We have work to do. I'm asking you to join me. First, start seeing energy. Bring mindfulness to your daily switch flipping, device charging, heating and cooling your homes, food, water, paying your energy bills. Learn as much as you can about these systems that support every moment of our lives. Second, participate in the transition. Join a solar co-op, uh, local community solar garden, a wind farm. Form one if they don't exist in your community. Support the innovators and advocates who are helping bring these solutions to more people in more places. Don't do this alone or quietly. Work with your friends, your neighbors, your local businesses, your elected officials. Tell everyone. Finally, help shift power over whether energy decisions are made. Get your community involved in the policy fights that bring control over energy decisions back to local communities and open up the, the innovation and the business models that create fairness and fuel energy democracy. Together we can make a better world, one where power is rooted in communities, in local economies, in the ecosystems in which we live. Together we can make clean energy work for everyone.